Wow. So last week we were in Utah, which I would describe as like being on the planet Mars on acid. It was insane. We've driven a little bit further north across the border into Idaho. And I think we've woken up in Narnia. It is so snowy. It's just white everywhere outside. Before we do anything, it's somebody's birthday today. Scout, it's your second birthday. Two, a whole two years off. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, Mima. Wait, sit. Good girl. It's Scout. Your birthday soon. Come here, buddy. Hello. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> Uh, whilst, whilst you're terrorising Scout, somebody is that? <laughs> right, so the only reason I bought the hat is because it doubles up as a little toy. We're trying to take a photo. Is that... <laughs> okay. There you go, buddy. Happy birthday, Scout. River, go on then. Yeah, good girl. <laughs> If anybody's wondering, they're raw hide free. Happy birthday, Scout. Two yeah. today, buddy. Happy birthday. Okay, so we left you last week in Salt Lake City. We have just hopped up the interstate, just across the border into Idaho. And our original plan was to take this road through the Sawtooth Mountains and then the Highway 93 North, which is meant to be super scenic and really beautiful. When we woke up this morning, obviously we were completely snowed in and we weren't sure if we could still take that road, but looking online, it looks like the road conditions are improving. It is improving here as well. Our alternative is just to hop on the Interstate North, which we don't really want to do. So I think, seeing as things look like it is clearing up, we're gonna give the mountain road a go. And if we have to turn around, we have to turn around. But that's the plan, yeah? Good, sounds like a plan to me. Cool. <laughs> Got a happy birthday, boy. Hey, Scout, it's not often you get snow on your birthday. Hey. I can't keep up with him. When it's like this, this is definitely the time to stock up on fuel, just in case. Probably just under half a tank for $54. So we were going to go to Ernest Hemingway's grave. But as you know, it snowed so much. And there's about five foot of snow across the cemetery. So <laughs> we'll look at it from a distance. <laughs> Give him a wave. Give him a wave and carry on north. <laughs> the road was taking us through the heart of the Sawtooth Mountains. It might be April, but winter still has its claws dug in deep here. As we climbed, we were surrounded by nothing but white, a true winter wonderland of snow drifts so deep they would easily bury the van. We have seen so many people snowshoeing, cross-country skiing here. I guess if you live here, you have to get into that kind of stuff because otherwise you wouldn't be able to do anything. The snow here in some parts is probably, what, seven, eight foot deep? Easily, yeah. It's, it's crazy. The road is pretty narrow on this bit. So you keep seeing signs like the trailheads or the road signs, and you can only literally see the top part of it yeah. because the rest of it is just buried under the snow. It's crazy. We followed the course of the Salmon River as it curved and twisted its way down the mountains. Winter was still dug in deep, even down here. Still got lots of snow up on the van. Right, so we've come down out the snowy mountains. This behind me is a bison jump. When bison used to roam in this valley, when people were hunting bison, and especially after they got horses, they would drive the bison up here and basically funnel them and herd them so they fell off the cliff and it'll make their job a little bit easier. But apparently there's loads of these bison jumps all over the States. There's a massive one up in Montana. Yeah, it's pretty dark, isn't it really? These are landscapes are the advantage, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, definitely. These bison jumps have been used by indigenous peoples for centuries, and this one in particular would have been used by the Shoshone tribe. And you can only imagine what scenes this landscape has witnessed. 
herds of this huge and magnificent animal tumbling down the cliff. It's a tough reality of what it would take to survive these harsh winters of northern Idaho. Look at this massive valley that we're in. So different to where we started off the drive. What have you got? Couldn't come to Idaho and not get some Idaho potatoes. One thing I know about Idaho is that it is very famous for potatoes. See them everywhere. Just gone to a grocery store and got some of them. They'll be for dinner tonight. And these guys are sniffing. They're not treats. How about both those petrol stations are named after you? Stink. They have skunks here. Yeah, there's one sat right next to me. Ha ha ha, very funny. We're parked up in this little dispersed uh, campsite area and there's a little resident that comes and greets you and he's been waiting outside the van. Now these guys haven't noticed him yet, so <laughs> I, I think actually he's just run off. But there's a dog that lives close by, but oh no, here he comes. Oh, he's, he lives close by, but he loves to play around here and he's, yeah, he's on his way back to the van. Yeah. Hello, hello. What is he doing this way? <laughs> Alright, so on this notice board, this is Blue Duck, an Australian shepherd and unofficial greeter of the cup of the Carmen boat ramp. He is not a stray. He belongs to the little girl who lives at the ranch across the road. And it says he loves to play with kids and dogs. If he bothers you, please call us. Um, but please do not take him with you, he's not a stray. <laughs> so he's even got his own little sign here. Blue duck, hello. He's very friendly. You were trying to play, didn't you? River off. River, he's not trying to get you stick, it's fine. Scout, have you had a good birthday? Have you had a nice birthday? You've had a birthday bone, and yeah, you did. You... <laughs> and you made a new friend. Yes, you did. For anyone that is new here, Scout is our Turkish rescue dog. We don't know his exact birthday, but when we found him and took him to the vet, he was about eight months old, and they reckon about beginning of April is his birthday. So, Scout, two whole years. River does not seem so impressed. Is he in the way? <laughs> Good guy, River. Even down in the valley, winter was still clinging on. We had another mountain pass to cross, but this one kept us on our toes a little more than the last. We're just crossing the mountain pass, and things have all of a sudden got a little snowy. Hit a bit of a wintry road, so we're just taking it very steady, heading down because there's a bit of snow on the road. Like, I feel very relieved we put the new tyres on. I don't think we would have done this without them. No. It'd have been too much of a risk, wouldn't it? Yeah. That looks like it's not made it any make difference. Thirty mile an hour, doing ten. It looks worse than it actually is, if that makes sense. Like looking at it, you think, shit, there's gonna be ice, but it's, yeah. we're gripped, braking, we're not sliding, so it does actually look a lot worse than, than it is. Mountain Pass successfully crossed, we drove deep into the Bitterroot Wilderness in search of something special hidden in the forest. So it's six o'clock in the morning, and we've got a mile to hike through this forest. This is Jerry Johnson Hot Springs. It's half six in the morning as well. Half six in the morning, there's not much I will get out of bed at half six in the morning for, but this is one of them. The 
best part about these is that they are clothing optional. How often do you get to bathe naked in a snowy forest in the middle of the mountains? This is amazing. What's really nice about this is that sometimes when you come to places like this, you see it on video, like behind me would be like 20 people or a car park and actually just this bit is the scenic bit but this is actually as incredibly beautiful as it looks we are in the middle of the forest it's hot bath water and it is just as beautiful as it looks and the scene would be perfect. But I don't want to leave. You can stay here for hours and hours and hours until you are a shriveled prune. And it's incredible. It's one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. I feel like I've just been lifted out, like dropped into like a little fantasy world. The fact that it's snowing and the snow around just makes it like so much more magical. Sand hot springs overlooking snow dusted trees. is just phenomenal. It's amazing, isn't it? It is really really it started to and snow. now it's time to snow as well wow do you know what idaho you have been very snowy and cold but completely magical Yeah, a clothing optional area. You may encounter nude hikers along this trail and it's terminus points. It is too cold to walk naked, I'll tell you that. When we arrived yesterday, there was about like 12 cars here. These hot springs are incredibly popular, so I would definitely recommend getting here as early in the morning as you can. There are different pools that you can go into. So there are only two of the cars here this morning and everyone's spread out, so we had the whole place for ourselves. But this is where we stayed last night, look at this. There we are. It's incredible. What a difference to last week in Utah. Gone from like a red planet to the white planet. Thank you, baby. Mm. Oh, it's nice to my hands. <laughs> Are you ever real? So it's up in... Oh. Really cool feature of Starlink. I love it. We've not used it until today is that you can set it so that if it detects snow or cold, it heats up and melts off. Genius, genius. <laughs> there is zero phone signal here. And as you can see, we are parked right next to these huge trees, which you're not supposed to do with the Starlink. You're meant to have a big open space so that it can easily access the satellites. It has been a tiny bit patchy, like dropping on and dropping off, but it's been on for probably 80% of the time. And then it will drop a little bit and come back on again. So because this side is completely open, it would have been okay. I think if there were massive trees here and we were in almost like a valley of trees, it wouldn't have worked. But thankfully, because it was just on one side, Starlink pulled through. So we're able to stay here overnight and get there nice and early in the morning. And you also might be wondering, guys, this looks like prime bear country. We did a lot of research before on forums and blog posts to see if bears were an issue in this area. And people have been coming to these hot springs their whole lives and said they've never seen a bear here. Not only that, but it's winter, so bears are generally in their dens. They're not going to be out and about. It's quite rare to see a bear in the winter. And also these hot springs are incredibly busy. Like already there's two cars here. We've been there this morning. Yesterday there were 15 cars and that's on a cold, snowy midweek day in April. So there's not really going to be much wildlife along that track because there's so many people along it all the time. Saying that, we do have some bear spray that Chris and Marianne gave us. Thank you so much, guys. We, do, we did carry that with us as a backup anyway, just in case. But we are being bear safe. Bear safe. <laughs> Let's hit the road before the mountain pass gets a bit too snowy. It was actually our first time ever sleeping in like a lay-by on the side of the road. But because it's such a, a quiet road, perfect nicely, perfect. Montana. 
Welcome to Montana. Montana. Just like that, we're at the snow. What a difference from this morning. We have left the mountains behind us now. We're in like the rolling grassy plains of Montana and we have come down here in search of one of America's most iconic animals. We have come to the National Bison Range to try and find some bison. It's a free roaming herd here, but it's protected. Shall we see if we can find any? Yep. Bison are the ones with the big humps and like the fabulous, like they look like rock stars, don't they? Like the big <laughs> shaggy coats, like. Yeah. They're like the rock stars of like the grazing animals. There's a buffalo, there's a bison. Here we oh. go, guys, we're in. Look at that, oh, our wow. luck has changed. 60 million bison once roamed the Great Plains of the United States, but by the 1800s, only 600 remained. Extinction was closing in. A wild herd was given protection on this land by Native American tribes who have deep cultural and spiritual connections to the bison. The descendants of that herd are the bison you see now, over 350 of them roaming in 18,000 acres on the Flathead Indian Reservation. Across the state, bison numbers are growing again. Slowly but surely, the largest mammal in North America is returning to its home in the Great Plains. At the foot of the hill, there's probably about like 30, 40 bison. They're just so, so far away though. They have so much, like yeah. this reserve is massive. Massive, yeah, which is really nice to see. That is so big and not like crowded and no. full of animals. Look, there's more here. They're here, right at the back, over here and down. Oh, it's a big deer. It's like an elk, maybe. Oh, there's another deer. Okay. I think that's an elk, isn't it? Yeah, I think they're elk. These magnificent beasts are indeed elk, one of the largest members of the deer family, here enjoying a casual stroll through the woods. How awesome was that? That was really cool. Really, really enjoyed that. It's a nice little scenic drive. See some bison, some elk. Alright, we pulled into a little campsite tonight. We've come to Flathead Lake, which is this beautiful, huge lake. But it doesn't seem to be it doesn't seem to have many wild camping spots around it. It's like private land and campsites. So we found this little campsite for the night and it's not too bad, is it? I think we're the only ones here and you can just see the lake here like through the trees. Sun is shining, sprinkling with snow. <laughs> the weather cannot make its mind up. I'm just gonna put the firewood under the van because I don't want it to get wet if it's just snow heavy. Right, seeing as it's been so cold and snowy, the only sensible thing to do is to have a roast dinner. It's a very traditional British thing, but we have our Idaho potatoes and has to be said that the highest form that a potato can take is that of a Sunday roast potato. So, shall we see if we do these Idaho potatoes justice? You've outdone yourself, baby. This is... The potatoes did go a little bit crumbly and soft. That's but okay. They came out okay. They taste amazing. It took so much longer than I thought it would. I am so hungry right now. The sun has gone down. It's half eight. We haven't eaten really all day. No. And we're up at half five this morning for those hot springs. Yeah. Definitely, just a couple of Yorkshire puddings. A couple of Yorkshire puddings and- it And some was... stuffing. And some stuffing, yeah. That's what we're missing. That's stuffing. what we're missing. Uh, next time, next, next time. Next time we'll get <clears> the stuffing. Anyway, let me dig in, I'm so hungry. We slept so well last night. But when we took these guys out for their wees before bed, as we opened the van, there were two deer. Well, I had the torch, and also there's two deer sat here, and they just see their white, uh, their yellow eyes just staring back at you. And then Sean up here, there were two deer up here, just sort of 
sleeping nicely, but they just saw their eyes. Like, it, it was a bit creepy, wasn't it? Because you like you shine the torch through the trees, and there's just literally eyes staring back at you, like in a film, yeah. like a cartoon. Yeah, I double check that they weren't bears. <laughs> okay, they were they were deer. Yeah, it's a bit freaky. Never had that before. Wow, well, this is Flathead Lake. It's one of the largest natural lakes in the US. Normally when we, like probably 90% of the time, when we come across big lakes like this, the reservoirs, but this is completely natural. Also apparently home to a monster. The Native Americans here, they had legends of a monster in this lake. And in the 1800s, there was a steamboat and the captain and the passengers saw like this white whale-like creature in the water. And apparently they have about one to two sightings of the monster every year. And it's nicknamed Flessy in honor of the Loch Ness Monster Nessie. I was about to say, so it's the American version of the Loch Ness Monster. There is. The monster needs its mittens on, that's for sure. <laughs> Okay, so why are we driving up to Alaska when it is clearly so cold heading north? A lot of you have been asking this, so I'll let you in on why we're driving to Alaska now. We've got two really important family weddings in July, one of which is Ben's brother who's getting married, so we have to fly back for those. Because of where they fall in the year, like the middle of July, we either have to go to Alaska before the weddings or after the weddings. We cannot fly back from Alaska back home because the flights are like twice as long and three times as expensive. To fly back from Fairbanks or Anchorage is crazy money. So we have to fly back from Vancouver. If we go up to Alaska after the weddings, that means we have to go from Vancouver up to Alaska, kind of starting of August, which really pushes our trip back further down the line, going from Mexico shipping to Colombia. We've got to remember that Alaska isn't our end goal. We're not on a holiday in Alaska. It is just part of this much bigger trip heading down to Argentina. So whatever decisions we make now can impact the trip further down the line. So we have to kind of have a rough plan of timings for like the next year almost of where we want to be at certain times of the year. So that means we have to leave for Alaska now. But the weather isn't too bad. It is a little bit cold here, but when we are due to get to Fairbanks, the average temperature is like 15 degrees, which isn't bad at all. We are heading into spring. So it isn't gonna be horrifically cold the whole time. We have had some incredible experiences in the snow the past couple of weeks. We've been snowshoeing, sledding, and had probably one of the most magical experiences in those hot springs in the snow. So it isn't all bad, um, but that is why we're heading up now to Alaska um, and not like in a month's time. And it is still a long way to Alaska. Like from Baja to Alaska or Prudhoe Bay, it's like driving from London to Pakistan. That's how far the drives are. We're not gonna be there in two weeks time, do it that way. We started the week here at the rest stop and we took this route through the Sawtooth Mountains and all that crazy snow where we saw the cross country skiers. And we came up through here followed the Salmon River up to Salmon where we saw that friendly dog. Then we continued on the 93 and it was around here that we had that this mountain pass, we had that, that crazy snow on the mountain. And then we followed the 93 north up through the Bitterroot Valley. We came across here on the 12, back into Idaho and the hot springs were around here in this Bitterroot wilderness area. Absolutely beautiful. We then came back on ourselves this way, back into Montana. Continued on the 93 North, up to the National Bison Range, which is awesome. And we are just here at Finley Point State Park, right at the south of Flathead Lake. And that is our route this week. So we've kind of just taken a straight up through Idaho, a little bit of Montana, and next week, guys, it's into Canada. So I know some of you will ask, why haven't you done Yellowstone National Park and kind of this part of Montana? And the reason is because Alaska is off in this direction, Yellowstone, and there's a lot of stuff we want to see in Montana, but it was mostly in the east. And we would have had to kind of come this way to then go back. And we just don't have the time to do that. It adds so many hours of driving on top of that, as well as going to see stuff. So we can save that for a proper trip another time. And also this route through the Sawtooth Mountains, just look really cool. So. That's why, I know some of you will ask why we haven't done the Yellowstone National Park, and that is why. So yeah.